Introduction The best hookup arrangement for each online instrument shall be determined based on the specifications given in sections 4 and 5 and the additional requirements of sections 6 and 7 on sealing, purging, heating, and insulation. The selected hookup shall guarantee proper measurement at all normal and abnormal process operating and climatic conditions. Instrument sealing and purging shall only be used if alternative hookup arrangements are less attractive from a TCOO, measurement accuracy, or maintenance point of view. To obtain acceptable response times, the kinematic viscosity of liquids and impulse lines shall be kept below 200 mm quires per second under all normal and abnormal conditions. In locations where freezing may occur, the water-filled parts of sensing lines and the instrument shall be winterized, i.e. heated and insulated. Impulse lines for sample takeoff and transport for online process stream analysis are covered by the guidelines for online process stream analysis, sample takeoff and transportation. Design concepts. This section covers the requirements for two distinct design concepts. Remote mounting concept, direct mounting concept, in the early 1980s, a modular mounting concept was developed for transmitters mounted remotely from the process connection. A mounting plate, attached to a dedicated instrument mounting support, accommodates the transmitter, manifold, heating element with terminal box, insulation covers, nameplate, and protective shade as required. Tubing with compression fittings interconnects manifold and process connections. Maintenance requirements have dominated the design of the remote mounting concept. The concept is based on a need for permanent access and includes facilities for in-situ testing and calibration. The remote mounting concept has proven to be very valuable and covers all frequently applied hookup arrangements. Typical hookup arrangements with component listings are available for liquid, gas, and steam applications. The reliable and proven use of compression fittings requires that all compression fittings in a plant, including those supplied with equipment packages, shall be of the same size, make, and type. Mixing of fittings of different sizes, e.g. metric with imperial, or different make type, will result in unreliable joints and might consequently result in loss of containment. The fittings and tubing shall be installed by skilled personnel, strictly in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. The impulse lines shall be pressure tested after installation. Reduced access needs for modern instrumentation, increased TCOO awareness, and product developments have paved the way for alternative mounting concepts, such as direct mounting. In the direct mounting concept, the online instrument and its manifold are mounted directly on and supported by the process connection this. Some designs combine the primary isolation valve and instrument manifold in one component, for instance, in a monoflange type device. This concept is characterized by a small number of components, forming a compact design. The solutions offered by the various manufacturers will be different, and the role of the manufacturer will be that of a solution provider rather than just a material supplier. It is essential to make the selection between the remote mounting and the direct mounting concept in an early project stage. Instrument process connections for online instruments. General. Process connections for online instruments shall have dedicated primary isolation valves to allow disconnection from the process. Only if a loop requires multiple instruments to cover the full operating range may the primary isolation valves be shared, providing that secondary isolation is available for each instrument. The flange-facing finish of direct mounting components, e.g. gauge blocks and lap joint tube adapters, shall be in accordance with ASME standards. The number of connections shall be minimized. Where required, compression fittings and or flanged connections are preferred. For certain applications, threaded connections may be specified. Parallel threaded connections with soft annealed metal sealing rings have preference over tapered sealing connections for their leak tightness. Instrument process connections on horizontal process lines shall be located at the top to limit the blocking risk by solids, dirt, or pipe scale. For liquid measurements on horizontal process lines, gas may collect in the impulse lines. In such cases, side tappings are preferred, but if this is not feasible, the effect on the measurement accuracy should be limited by installing seal pots to allow regular venting, 
and or by minimizing the difference in elevation between the top of the impulse line and the instrument process connection. If a liquid contains vapors or dissolved gas, the process connection should be installed in a vertical line. If a process connection can only be made available from a horizontal line, the tapping should be either at the side or pointing downwards at an angle. Instrument process connections for the remote mounting concept. Process connections for online instruments shall, wherever possible, terminate in a DN15 lap joint flange with lap joint tube adapter. Primary isolation valves, lap joint flanges, gaskets, and bolts, including their heating insulation, are the responsibility of mechanical engineering. The responsibility of instrument engineering starts at the lap joint tube adapter. Instrument process connections for the direct mounting concept. Flanged gauge blocks shall be used for direct mounted pressure gauges. Similar blocks may be used for process connections of other instrument types. Some manufacturers offer components that combine the primary isolation valve and instrument manifold in one housing, for instance in a monoflange style. Such designs may be considered in consultation with mechanical engineering. General specification for impulse lines. Specification of components. The general rules for material selection of impulse line components are similar to those for wetted parts of instruments. Material selection is subject to approval. Where process conditions allow, the wetted instrument impulse line components, i.e. tubing, compression fittings, manifolds, etc., shall be made of AISI 316 type stainless steel. Stainless steel tubing and compression fittings shall be suitable for a maximum allowable working pressure of at least 413 bar at temperatures between minus 200 degrees Celsius and plus 38 degrees Celsius. For maximum allowable working pressures at higher temperatures, see Appendix 1. For applications where AISI 316 stainless steel is not suitable, other materials such as inkaloy, mono, hastaloy, tantalum, or titanium should be applied. Components of such materials may be very costly and may at a later stage be inadvertently interchanged with unsuitable stainless steel components. Alternative hookup arrangements, e.g. diaphragm seals, or alternative measurement principles, e.g. inline flow instruments or internal level measurements, should be considered as a first choice. Austenitic stainless steel tubing, including insulated tubing, is vulnerable to chloride stress corrosion if exposed to temperatures above 60 degrees Celsius. Impulse and steam tracer tubing installed under such conditions shall be constructed from any of the following materials. ASTM B423 alloy, UNS NO825 tubing, e.g. Incoloy 825 or Necrofer 4221, ASTM B68 alloy, UNS NO80028 tubing, e.g. Sanicro 28, UNSS 312-254, SMO, stainless steel impulse line components may be selected on the basis of the MS key numbers given on standard drawings for instrument impulse lines. Stainless steel compression fittings shall conform to the relevant specifications. Mounting arrangements. Subject to environmental conditions, instruments may require protective shades. The shade shall be fixed in a way allowing quick installation and removal. Mounting aspects of the remote mounting system. Instrument mounting supports. In the remote mounting concept, instruments are installed on dedicated mounting supports. The use of instrument mounting supports mounted on the process line requires approval. They shall not be applied on process line sizes smaller than DN100, insulated process piping, or vibrating service. Insulating barriers shall be applied to prevent electrolytic corrosion when mounting supports are clamped around process piping of a different material. Supports should not be fixed to grating. If fixed to fireproofed plant structures, they should be welded to the steel structure before fireproofing is applied. Standardized mounting plates, instruments with their manifolds are mounted on standardized mounting plates. If required, heating elements with terminal boxes, insulating covers, and protective shades are also installed on this plate. These plates have facilities for installing nameplates. Instrument location and routing of impulse line tubing. Impulse line tubing shall be as short as possible and the number of joints minimized. Horizontal lines shall slope at a ratio of approximately 1.5. For straight lengths up to a maximum of 1 meters, the tubing is self-supporting. 
For longer lengths, it shall be supported at approximately one meter intervals. Insulating spacer material shall be applied to separate the tubing from its supports. Impulse lines shall be grouped closely together. Heavy components such as seal pots shall be properly supported. The impulse lines shall be arranged to absorb thermal expansion and vibration. Filling, flushing, venting, and draining. The policy on venting, draining, and removal of contaminated seal and process fluids from impulse lines should be consulted. Draining venting is one option. Disposal into the process by means of a mobile seal liquid refill pump unit is another. The impulse line hookup should include the necessary connections for such a pump unit. Painting and coating. All supports, brackets, etc. shall be protected by a corrosion resistant paint or coating. Surfaces which will be inaccessible after installation shall be treated before installation. Instruments and stainless steel components shall not be painted or coated. Painting shall not foul threaded connections or jeopardize the proper operation of moving parts such as valve handles. Testing. All online instruments and impulse line components shall be pressure tested to the pressure limit of the instrument or to a pressure of 1.5 times the upper design pressure of the process, whichever is lower. Primary isolation valves shall be closed during flushing of process equipment and piping. Instrument air, nitrogen, or demineralized water shall be used for pressure testing. After pressure testing with water, the instrument and the impulse lines shall be carefully drained and blown out. Impulse line pressure testing may be integrated with pressure testing of process equipment and piping. Special applications and considerations for impulse lines. Steam entering the impulse line shall condense before reaching the instrument to prevent damage by overheating. In freezing climates, steam condensate impulse lines shall be winterized by tracing and insulation. For remote mounted instruments, seal pots shall be provided to establish a firm condensate reference points. The impulse lines shall slope downwards from the seal pot to the instrument process connection and to the instrument. For differential pressure type instruments, these condensate reference points shall be at the same elevation. For direct mounted pressure instruments, a gauge block with an integral siphon should be applied. Manufacturer's solutions for direct mounted differential pressure type instruments may be acceptable if a firm condensate reference point can be established. Oxygen service. All components in oxygen service shall meet specific requirements. Any medium containing more than 21% oxygen by volume or a system with air at a pressure above 50 bar J is to be considered as oxygen service. Hydrogen fluoride HF service. The material selection for wetted parts of instruments and components shall meet specific requirements. Stainless steel type AISI 316 may, under certain conditions, be subject to pitting and or stress cracking if exposed to process fluids containing HF. Impulse line tubing in HF service shall be constructed from ASTM-B165 UNO400 Monel with Monel compression fittings. Alternatively, Monel or carbon steel welded pipes may be applied. All valves shall be of Monel. Cold deformation shall be minimized by applying the largest possible bending radius, limiting the extreme fiber deformation to 5% maximum. Before HF is put into the system, a careful check of the tightness of compression joints and screwed connections is required. Fluids with high pore points or hydrate formation risk. Liquids that solidify at ambient temperatures shall be prevented from entering process tappings, primary isolation valves, and impulse lines to prevent malfunctioning, blockage, and or damage. Special attention shall also be given to those gas services where hydrates may form at low temperatures. A liquid seal, diaphragm seal, external purging, or heating may be applied to prevent solidification and hydrate formation. Fluids containing suspended solids. If process fluids contain suspended solids, these solids may settle in process tappings, primary isolation valves, and impulse lines, and may ultimately cause complete blockage. If the concentration of suspended solids is relatively low, blockage may be prevented by sloping the process connections and short impulse lines downwards to the process at an angle of approximately 45 degrees. If the concentration of suspended solids is high, a liquid seal or external purging should be applied.
special applications and considerations for impulse lines, fouling and waxy service. Impulse lines and fouling waxy service are likely to become plugged even if heating is applied. In such cases, instruments with extended diaphragms or with remote diaphragm seals should be considered. In the latter case, additional purging may still be required to prevent plugging between the equipment, pipe wall, and the remote seal. Susceptibility of low-range gas measurements to liquid slugs. Experience shows that standard 10 mm OD impulse line tubing with an internal diameter of 7 mm has a limited self-draining capability. If used in gas or vapor service, condensables formed may not flow back into the process, not even in vertical lines. Droplets tend to cluster and slugs of liquids hang in the impulse line. Hanging slugs have a considerable impact on pressure or differential pressure sensing instruments with a relatively low adjusted range. For pressure and differential pressure sensing instruments with an adjusted range of 2 bar or below, one or more of the following remedial measures should be considered. Apply heat tracing to keep the process fluid in the impulse lines in the vapor phase. Apply wet legs. Mount pressure sensing instruments in the direct vicinity of the process connection, if feasible, to limit the tubing length and elevation difference between instrument and process connection. Apply wide bore tubing piping DN15 or DN20 instead of standard 10 mm OD tubing to restore the self-draining capabilities. Low temperature service. Process liquids operating at temperatures below ambient that vaporize at ambient temperatures will evaporate upon entering the impulse lines before reaching the remote mounted instruments. The vapors so formed will push the liquid back towards the process until an equilibrium is established. This self-purging phenomenon occurs for instance in cryogenic processes operating typically between 900 degrees to 170 degrees. Where required, heating shall be considered to assist self-purging e.g. LPG applications. Low temperature services require expansion loops in their impulse line tubing. Very toxic service. For personnel protection and for environmental reasons, facilities should be provided to dispel very toxic liquids from instrument impulse lines into the process equipment so that maintenance can be performed safely. A mobile seal liquid refill pump unit should be used to displace very toxic liquids by safe liquids during operation. For sites where the vent and drain concept is still applied, the following shall apply to very toxic fluids. Manifold valves shall be provided with an interlocking system. All vents from instruments, manifolds, and seal pots shall be connected to flare. All drains shall be connected to a drain vessel or covered pit which is allocated for very toxic products and for which adequate disposal should be arranged. The required length of tubing for the vent and drain lines shall be added on the relevant hookup drawing. The instrument or the manifold shall be provided with filling flushing connector S if flushing and neutralizing of the instrument and manifold is necessary before the instrument is disconnected. The maximum allowable concentration of very toxic components and fluids which may be vented to the atmosphere shall be approved. Sour or wet H2S service. Sour or wet H2S service is defined in specific standards. Materials which, under any process condition, are in contact with process water or aqueous condensate shall comply with ISO 15156 or NACE MRO 103 as applicable and the relevant piping class. If impulse line components cannot be obtained in accordance with these standards, the principle shall be consulted. Valve head spindles and or parts of them in contact with sour fluids shall be constructed from 17-4 pH stainless steel stellite coated stainless steel, stellite or Hastelloy C, complying with ISO 15156 or NACI MR0103 as applicable. Sealing and purging, liquid seal. Seal liquids for use in impulse lines shall be selected in consultation with the party responsible for the process design, considering the following aspects. Effect of process fluid on seal liquid, i.e. the resistance stability of the seal liquid in contact with the process fluids, polymerization, disintegration, solubility of process fluid. Effect of seal liquid on process fluid, process fluid contamination, poisoning of catalyst. Maintenance. The seal liquid and the selected hookup shall guarantee a low maintenance effort. 
A seal liquid that needs frequent replacement or replenishment, for instance, is not acceptable. Seal liquid properties, temperature expansion coefficient, evaporation and freezing point, kinematic viscosity, handling safety, cost of purchase, tracing, disposal, etc. This includes the following aspects. The seal liquid density in the traced impulse line shall be higher than the density of any of the process fluid components to prevent gradual replacement of sealing liquid by components from the process fluid. The kinematic viscosity in the impulse line shall not exceed 200 millimeters per seconds to obtain an acceptable response time. The seal liquid shall not evaporate under any operating condition at local ambient conditions. The seal liquid shall not freeze or shall be protected against freezing at local ambient conditions. The seal liquid shall not be very toxic or flammable. Three groups of seal liquids are listed below in order of preference. One, familiar seal liquid. One of the heavy components present in the process fluid is selected as sealing liquid. If the process fluid contains water, water should be considered as a first choice choice due to its chemical and physical properties. 2. Foreign seal liquid, a fluid not present in the process fluid. It shall not harm nor be harmed by the process fluid. 3. Process liquid, the process liquid is used as seal liquid. Frequently used low-cost seal liquids are water, glycol, glycerine, and silicon oil, e.g. used silicon oil drained from transformers. Liquid seal and hookup of wet leg level applications. The selection of seal liquids and the hookup arrangement for differential pressure type level instruments with wet legs is defined in general terms. Additional guidance includes seal liquid selection for the reference leg applications requires special attention since the LRV calculation includes a term for elevation difference times the density of the reference leg. The LRV shifts if the actual density in the reference leg differs from the one used for LRV calculation. For transmitters mounted just below the lower equipment nozzle, only density changes in the reference leg affect the LRV. For transmitters mounted well below the lower equipment nozzle, changes in density in the measurement leg will also affect the LRV and may justify the use of seal liquids in the measurement leg. Apart from LRV errors resulting from liquid density changes, the operating pressure affects the measurement accuracy in two ways. The transmitter accuracy is affected by variations in operating pressure, and the LRV calculation includes a term for elevation difference times vapor density, which varies with operating pressure. Diaphragm seals. Remote diaphragm seal applications and their installation are covered by additional requirements for installation and calibration of diaphragm seal type level transmitters. Specific requirements include For new installations, the equipment nozzle shall match the flange size of the diaphragm seal. If reducers are required, eccentric reducers shall be used and the bottom of the reducer shall be flush with the bottom of the primary isolation valve to prevent dirt from collecting settling. If the remote seal was selected to prevent impulse line plugging in fouling or waxy service, an equalizing line would also become plugged and shall therefore not be installed. Hence, in situ zero and span calibration at the actual operating pressure is not possible. Vent connections are required for in situ zero calibration at atmospheric pressure. For remote seals used in applications where no plugging risk exists and where the liquid kinematic viscosity can be kept below 200 mm squares per second, an equalizing line may be installed between the lower and upper nozzle to allow in situ zero span calibration at the actual operating pressure. Drain vent or flushing purge connections shall be installed as required. Sealing and purging. External purging. External purging may be considered only if other methods to eliminate problems caused by condensation, vaporization, or plugging are not practicable. Its use, however, should be avoided whenever possible since it could cause false differentials. The installation costs are higher and more frequent maintenance is required. Since the process fluid may enter part of the impulse line on purge failure, the selected impulse line materials shall be suitable for the process fluid. The purge fluid shall be free from solids, non-corrosive, and in a single phase at all operating temperatures and pressures. 
The purge fluid shall not interfere with the process nor react with the process fluid. Purge systems shall have a guaranteed source of supply at a pressure which is permanently higher than the maximum process pressure, but lower than the design pressure of the process equipment or piping. A low but constant flow rate shall be maintained. The fluid velocity at the process connection shall be approximately 0.06 meters per second for liquid purge and 0.6 meters per second for gas or steam purge. The purge injection point should be close to the process connections to limit the effect of pressure drop caused by the purge flow in the impulse lines. A purge assembly should be used consisting of a filter, soft seated non-return valve S, and vent valve with anti-tamper facilities. Purge blocks in accordance with these requirements may be selected based on specific specifications. A constant purge flow can be reached by one of the following methods. A restriction orifice in the form of a purge orifice nipple. A restriction orifice may be used if the purge supply pressure is constant and high enough to guarantee a stable purge flow under all operating conditions. For gas and steam service, this is reached at critical flow across the restriction orifice, i.e. the purge flow rate is independent of variations in process operating pressure. A constant flow device. For side-mounted purge pipes and equipment, see specific standard drawings. Top or side-mounted purge pipes and primary isolation valves are the responsibility of mechanical engineering. Instruments with gas purging shall be mounted above the maximum liquid level, and the impulse lines shall slope downwards from the instrument manifold to the process connection. Self-purging. Remote-mounted instruments. Where self-purging is applied, Process connections should be located on the top or side of the equipment process piping. For process connections at the side of the equipment process piping, the impulse line S shall drop vertically downwards from the instrument and then continue horizontally with a slope of approximately 1.5 down to the primary isolating valves at the process connections. To prevent measurement errors due to liquid static head if the self-purging is not operating properly, the vertical drop from the instrument shall be as short as possible. The first part of the impulse line at the primary isolation valve side shall be insulated over a length of at least 300 millimeters to reduce heat influx into the process. The remaining part shall have either an exposed bare length of at least 300 millimeters to enable evaporation of the process fluid by heat influx from the surrounding atmosphere. This arrangement shall be used if all process liquid components evaporate under all normal and abnormal operating pressures at the lowest ambient temperature, or a heated and insulated length of at least 300 millimeters to assist evaporation. This arrangement shall be used if the liquid contains heavy components which will not evaporate under any of the normal or abnormal operating pressures at the lowest ambient temperature. Direct mounted instruments. The currently available direct mounting products are less suitable for instruments in low temperature service due to the requirement to reduce heat influx into the process and low temperature limits of instruments. The lower temperature limit of instruments depends on the applied sensor fluid and on limits for the electronics. The temperature drop between the process and a direct mounted instrument depends on the properties of the direct mount components, such as dimensions, exposed area, number and type of joints, and materials of construction. Heating and insulation. The type of heating, steam heating, electrical tracing, or other means of instruments and impulse lines shall be established in consultation with the principal. Tracing temperatures shall be carefully selected to prevent overheating, resulting in boiling impulse line liquid. Remote mounted instruments. If transmitters require heating, pre-assembled instrument housings with heating facilities and insulation shall be provided around the manifold and transmitter housing. Direct mounted instruments. If direct mounting of heated instruments is considered, the following aspects need specific attention interface with heating and insulation of the process piping or equipment, 
availability of prefabricated and readily removable enclosures with heating facilities and insulation for instruments within the selected direct mounting concept. Length and additional weight resulting from heating and insulation to prevent too high stress on process nozzles. Steam heating. Steam heating systems shall comply with specific guidelines. The steam supply and condensate return piping shall be short. The steam supply and condensate return piping, including steam trap, are the responsibility of mechanical engineering. The manifold and instrument body shall be heated by means of a tracer block. Special tubing should be used to heat instrument impulse lines. Special tubing should also be used if impulse lines are winterized by steam heating. To prevent overheating, non-conducting spacers shall be fitted between the impulse and heater tubing at 400 mm intervals. The arrangement shall be such that the instrument can be removed without disconnecting the tracer tubing and or tracer block. If steam heating is applied for reasons of high fluid pour point, the heater tubing and the impulse line shall be clamped together. Clamping material shall be stainless steel. The total number of joints in the tracer tubing shall be kept to a minimum. Each instrument shall have a dedicated steam supply and condensate return line with isolating valves, labeled with the instrument tag number. The steam supply to one instrument shall not be divided into parallel sections, i.e. for each instrument, a single continuous path is required from the steam supply point up to the steam trap. The steam flow in the tracer tubing shall be downwards, and pockets in the tubing shall be avoided because the buildup of condensate will prevent a continuous steam flow. Each tracer line shall terminate in a condensate return line via a steam trap. Electrical tracing. The heating equipment shall satisfy the requirements for electrical safety in accordance with the area classification. The arrangement of the electric tracing shall be such that transmitters can be removed without disconnecting the electrical heating block. All electrical trace heating components, except the electrical heating block, and or electrical heater attached to the manifold are the responsibility of electrical engineering and are covered in specific guidelines. Electrical tracing shall not be applied in processes where the upper design temperature exceeds the temperature limit of the selected heating tape. If self-regulating tracing tape is used, e.g. for winterizing, its power off point shall be below the temperature at which the impulse line liquid starts to strip evaporate. Insulation. Traced impulse lines, traced instrument parts, and all steam supply and condensate return lines shall be insulated. All couplings in the tracer tubing and the impulse lines shall be accessible without removing the complete insulation. Insulation of impulse lines, seal pots, steam supply lines, and condensate return lines is part of the scope of mechanical engineering. For insulating the instrument bodies, manifold blocks, and tracer blocks, prefabricated enclosures shall be applied, fitting closely around the parts which are to be heated. These are part of the scope of instrument engineering. The body enclosure shall be constructed so that it can easily be removed in the event that the instrument needs maintenance. Notes. 1. The electronic parts of instruments should not be installed within an enclosure in order to prevent overheating and downgrading of the area classification around that part. 2. Winterizing shall not be provided for impulse lines in freezing climates when they are installed in temperature-controlled buildings, such as demineralized water plants.